Okay, um, so this question number 27 says identify the vertex domain range and graph the function. Um, now if you're in regular, I change this to a positive 2. Um, if you're honors, I left it as the 1 fourth. Um, if I was working this with um, the 1 fourth, it wouldn't hurt to just go over that right quick. That means um, I'm still going to look at this for my vertex. This is negative 3, so that means go to the right 3. This is negative 2, so that means go down 2. So if I go to the right 3 and down 2, there's my vertex. Okay? If I want to then find the next points, well, I can either just type this, if I have a calculator, I can type this in y equals, and then I can figure out, um, uh, go to the table and look at the values. If I don't have a calculator, then I just, well, first off, I think, okay, a is 1 fourth, right? Well, a means go to the right one and go up or down that amount. That amount. So I go to the right one and go up a fourth. To the left one and go up a fourth. Okay. I really only need five points um, from you. So the next thing I would do is go to the right one more, which is x equals five. So one fourth times five minus three quantity squared minus two. One fourth times, well, five minus three is two, and two squared is four and one-fourth of four is one. So one minus two is negative one. And to make it symmetrical, and that's enough to go ahead and graph your quadratic and get an idea of what it's going to look like. Um, if you wanted to go further, you might plug in seven. Six would make this an odd number, and you're dividing by four. So if I plugged in seven, just to see what it would look like, one-fourth. 7 minus 3, quantity squared minus 2, 7 minus 3 is 4, 4 squared is 16. So 16 times 1 fourth is 4, minus 2 is 2. So a 7, it would be at 2, which is in line, so that's over 2, so it's over 2. It's in line with where my graph should be going, so we're good. Okay, uh, as far as vertex, positive 3, negative 2, domain which is left and right. Does it go all the way to the left and all the way to the right? It's going to keep on going, keep on going, so yes. Range is up and down. Okay. Does it go all the way down? No. The lowest it goes is negative 2. Does it go all the way up? Yes. So the range is infinity. Okay, on this one, um, if you're doing this um, in regular, then I would suggest you go to U of R equals. So we clear out whatever's in there. And then we just type in that function, negative x squared minus 6x minus 12. So negative x squared minus 6x minus 12. And I'm going to go zoom 6 just to get it in the normal window. And I see this right here. So I want to be able to graph this point. I need to find the maximum. So I go second, calculate maximum. I go to the left of it. And then I go to the right of it. Press enter, press enter. I don't want to guess, so I press enter again, and it tells me that my vertex is at negative, basically 3, negative 3. So I'm going to go to negative 3, negative 3, and put a dot. Okay? Now I'm just going to go to my table and see that um, directly to the right of negative 3 is negative 2. At negative 2, I'm at negative 4, which makes sense because A is negative 1. Go to the right one and down one. And at negative 1, I'm at negative 7. And there we go. Okay, now if you don't have a calculator, then I would suggest you do h equals negative b over 2a for your vertex. So h equals negative b, so positive 6 over 2 times a, which is negative 1, so negative 3. So you know your x value of your vertex is negative 3. And then the y value, you plug in negative 3. So that's a negative. Negative 3 squared minus 6 times negative 3 minus 12. That's a negative 3 squared, which is a positive 9, but then it's a negative. So negative 9 plus 18 minus 12. Negative 9 plus 18 is positive 9 minus 12 is negative 3. So then I see my vertex is the point negative 3, negative 3. As far as domain and range, domain is, well, I just did all of that out of sight. How lovely. Okay, we'll go over our big. H equals negative B over 2A. So positive 6 over 2 times negative 1, which equals negative 3. So then I know my x value of my vertex, h. I plug in negative 3 here and here all for, for all my x's and get the y value, negative 3. And so there's my vertex.
Now as far as domain, domain is left and right. Does it go all the way left and all the way to the right? Yes, so all the numbers. What about range? Well, the lowest it goes, remember range is up and down, domain is left and right. The lowest it goes is negative infinity, it just keeps on going, but never reaches it, so parenthesis. And then up, the highest it goes is negative 3, but it does reach it, so bracket. Okay. Uh, rewrite this in vertex form. Well, if I was in regular, then I would go to this and I would say x squared plus 4x minus 12. And I would see what the graph gives me. Now, I can tell that I need to go lower, so I'm going to go my y minimum, negative, negative 21, then negative 15 all the time, I think. We'll see. It was not. I should have gone negative 20. Okay, so I can see my vertex. So all I need for my vertex form is to say y equals a x minus h quantity squared plus k. Well, a is the same in vertex and standard form. So this is in standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So I already know a is 1. Okay. Now if I need the x, or the h value of my vertex, which is the x value of my vertex, then I'm going to go to my graph and I'm going to find the minimum, because this is a minimum. So I'm going to go second, calculate number 3. I'm going to go to the left of the minimum, so somewhere to the left, that's to the left of it. Go to the right of the minimum, press enter. I don't care to guess, and so I press enter. And I get that my, my vertex is at the point negative 2, 16. And if you look at this, it looks like you're going left 2 and down 16. So if I go left 2, that means plus 2 and then minus 16. Because I went to the left 2 and down 16. And there's my vertex form. Now as far as converting to standard form, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with the 2 after I deal with the x minus 3 quantity squared. So this is x minus 3 quantity squared and then plus 5. So I want to figure out what this is. This is x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9, which is x squared minus 6x plus 9. But remember, I'm multiplying all of that by 2, and then I'm adding 5. So, I've got 2x squared minus 12x plus 18 plus 5. So that's 2x squared minus 12x plus 23, and that is my y equals. And that's my function in standard form. Okay, now let's talk about um, number 41. It says it's, we're dealing with a uh, t-shirt air gun, and we've got time, which is going to be x, and height of the t-shirt, which is going to be y. Okay, identify the quadratic model, which means I need to enter in my data. So I'm going to go stat. So the first order of business is to go to stat and then edit. You also want to make sure before you do this that your stat diagnostics are on. So it's mode, so that's under mode. Which is right here. So go to mode right here. Um, I'm going to go up to stat diagnostics, press on, okay, so I can quit. Clear this out, now I'm going to go to stat edit. So stat, right here, edit is the first thing, so I just press enter. I'm going to enter in my data. My data is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 6, 7 for the x. 0, 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, and the data for my y values are 5, 50, 5, 50, 99, 120, 160. Okay, so I've got my data entered. Now I want to go to stat, calculate. So back to stat and over to calculate, and then I want to go to the quadratic regression 
because it says find your quadratic model. So I press enter. Now you have some options. I don't, we never do frequency list. If you want to store your regression equation in y equals, then you go to alpha trace y1. Is it okay if you forget to do this? Well, what it does is it, it takes the equation and it puts it in y equals. If you find the equation and you didn't store it, you can just type it in y equals. So you can just go to y equals and type it in there. So I press enter. Oh, oh well, I did it twice. Okay. If you don't have your R squared, then you know you need to go to mode and do your stat diagnostics again. Okay. So in this question, it says identify the quadratic model. Well, the quadratic model is the AX squared plus BX plus C. So Y equals AX squared negative 7.722x squared plus bx so six plus 62.509x plus c so plus 1.802 that's my model now as far as um, what my correlation coefficient is or the correlation it's 0.993 r squared what does that mean that means it's a very strong fit it's a 99.3 percent fit um, identify the vertex. Well, the vertex, I'm going to have to actually graph this and find it. So I stored it in y equals. So I've got this, and it's got a lot of decimals. If you didn't, then maybe you just typed in negative 7.722x squared. Now, the more decimals you write right here, the more accurate your answer is going to be. But um, So please at least write two or three on this, on your equation. Okay, I'm going to change my window to make sure that I can see the data. My x's go from 0 to 7. I'm going to go from negative 5 to 10. My y's go from 5 to 120, so I'm going to go negative 25 to 130. Uh, 150. Might as well. Okay. So, I see the quadratic. And it says identify the vertex. Well, the vertex is at this maximum right here. So I'm going to go second calculate maximum. I am to the left of the maximum, so I press enter. Now I'm going to go to the right of it, so I hold it. And I'm to the right, so I press enter, enter. And I get that my vertex is the point 4.047 comma 128.303. Now this is x and this is y. x represented time and y represented height of the t-shirt. So when it says, what is the maximum height of the t-shirt? Well, it's 128.303 feet. Predict the time when, if I asked you how long it took to get to the maximum height, then you would say 4.047 uh, seconds. Predict the time the t-shirt hits the ground. Well, the t-shirt hits the ground right here, which is a zero, because y equals zero. So second calc zero. Second calc zero. So I need to go to the left and to the right of this point right there. So this is to the left, this is to the right. Anywhere up here is to the left, but I'll go ahead and get closer to it. So left, right, enter. So I've got this is zero. Five e to the negative twelve means five point zero move the decimal twelve decimals this way. So that's basically zero. And if you can tell, I mean that's where we're at on the y axis. Or on the x axis when y equals zero. So I got x equals eight point one two four and that's one two four seconds. Predict the height of the t-shirt at five seconds. We well, have a couple different options. We have multiple options actually. Um, predict. Um, what you can do is you can go into y equals, or you just go to your table. So you can go to your table and say, well, when x equals five, because it says predict the height, which is y, at five seconds, which is x equals five. So when x equals five, what is y equal? So I went to my table and it's 121.3. Okay, it's actually 121.296, but it's however you want to write it. 121.296, um, and that is feet because that's the height, right? 
Um, another thing I could have done is just gone to my e equation and up here plugged in an x equals and typed it in negative 7.722 times 5 squared plus 62.509 times 5 plus 1.802. And the third option is just to go to second, calculate, and then value. So just press enter. When x equals 5, if you press enter, it'll tell you what the corresponding y value is. And that's 121.296. Okay. Identify the range for the given domain. Well, if you think about this t-shirt, they start out at a height of 5. The maxed out height was 128.303, and then it ended at 0 feet. So as far as range, this isn't even there. The lowest it goes is 0 feet. The highest it goes is 128.303. So now we want to um, identify the equation for the graph in both standard and vertex form. Okay. If you have this right here, it looks like it's going down. When you go to the right one, it looks like it's going down a half. Now, if you were in my regular class, I went ahead and had you move it right here, which means you knew A was uh, negative 2 because you went down 2. And it's worked out like that on the review, but I'm going to go ahead and go over on this one, like the ones that we went over in class, and I posted those. I'm going to go ahead and work this as if I don't know what A is. So y equals A times x minus h quantity squared plus k. I do know that I'm moving to the left 2. So x plus 2 quantity squared and up 6. What I don't know is what A is for sure. Okay, we're going to have to prove it anyway. I may think it's negative enough, but i got to prove it. So I'm going to use any of these points. It doesn't really matter. Um, in the notes today, guys, we use 0, 4, so I'm going to go ahead and use 2, negative 2. So that's the x and that's the y. Well, for y, I'm going to plug in negative 2. For x, I'm going to plug in positive 2. It really doesn't matter which one you plug in, you're going to get the same a. So, plus 2 plus 2, that's 4. And then 4 squared is 16, so I've got negative 2 equals 16a plus 6. I'm going to subtract 6 over and get negative 8 equals 16a divided by 16, and a equals negative 1 half. So the vertex form is negative 1 half x plus 2 quantity squared plus 6. So then how do I go from that to standard form? Well, you need to multiply, expand out x plus 2 quantity squared first. So this is x plus 2 times x plus 2, which is negative 1 half times x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. That right there is 4x, so I've got negative 1 half times x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus 6. I'm going to distribute the negative one half. Negative one half of x squared is negative one half x squared. Negative one half of four is negative two. Negative one half of four is negative two plus six, which is four. So my final answer is negative one half x squared minus two x plus four. Okay. I'm going to add a view. I'm sorry. So I've got x plus 2 times x plus 2, float it out, x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. Combine these two to get 4x, so then that's x squared plus 4x plus 4. Distributed my negative 1 half, got negative 1 half x squared minus 2x minus 2. You add the 6 and then those two combine to positive 4. Okay, so let's do some factoring. How do I solve 5x squared minus 15x? I'm going to factor out a 5 and an x, and I'm left with the 5 is gone, the x, one of the x's is still left over. 15 divided by 5 is 3, the x is gone. So 5 times what gives me 0? Well, x equals 0. If I set this equal to 0, if I set each term equal to 0, so this equal to 0 and that equal to 0. If I divide by 5, I get 0, and if I add 3, I get 3. So you could do it that way, or you could just say 5 times what gives me 0? Zero, 0. What minus 3 gives me 0? Positive 3. And there's my answers.
this one. This is a the same thing as x squared plus 0x minus 49. So what are the factors of negative 49 that add up to 0? And they are 7 and negative 7. So x plus 7, x minus 7, x equals plus or minus 7. Um, as far as this one goes, I'm looking for the factors of negative 15 that add up to 2, and that is 5 and negative 3. So x plus 5, x minus 3 equals 0, when x equals negative 5 and positive 3. On this one, I'm looking for the factors of 20 that add up to 9, 5, and 4. So v plus 5, v plus 4, v equals a negative 5 and a negative 4. Okay. On 37, since this is a lead coefficient of something other than 1, you want to multiply and get 18. So the factors of 18 that add up to 11 are 2 and 9. So you've got a plus 2 and a plus 9. But you have to remember to divide by the lead coefficient. So what's the opposite of positive 2 thirds? Negative 2 thirds. Well, that's a 3, and the opposite of positive 3 is negative 3. Okay, I'm going to do one of these completing the square. Um, first step, I'm going to get the constant over. So the first step is to write x squared minus 6x equals a negative 5. The next step is to take the middle term and divide it by 2, and I get negative 3. So that becomes x minus 3 quantity squared. Now, after having done that, I'm going to take that negative 3 and square it, and I get 9. And that's what I add to both sides of the equation. Well, that now becomes positive 4. So I put a 4 right there. Okay, so I'm dealing with x minus 3 quantity squared equals 4. Well, the next thing I want to do is get rid of the square so I can solve for x. How do I get rid of the square? I take a square root. So x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 4. Well, the square root of 4 is a number, so it's x minus 3 equals plus or minus 2. But then I want to solve for x, so I add 3 over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say uh, 3 plus 2 is 5, and 3 minus 2 is 1. And those are my solutions. Uh, you don't have to do this if you're in regular, but if you're in honors, you do have to do that. So what is the discriminant b squared minus 4ac in the formula? Negative b plus or minus square root of b squared oh, minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, so basically, if it's a positive, you know that you have two real answers because of the plus and minus. If it's a negative, you have two imaginary. And if it's zero, then you have one real. Don't forget, it's just b squared minus 4ac. All I'm asking you to do is find the discriminant. So b squared minus 4 times a times c. Figure out what that is. If it's positive, then you've got uh, two real answers. 64. That's a negative uh, 12. It's a negative times a negative times a negative, which is a negative. 4 times 3 times 18. Oof, I don't even know. 12 times 18, that's 16, so that's 9, 2, and 1, so 216. 64 minus 216, no, 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 this is red, is negative 152. The discriminant, all I need from you is negative 152. What does that mean? It's, it's, it's negative, the two, and measure. Okay, quadratic formula, I'll do two of these each. Um, I'll do the 44 and 46. And then, um, 47, and that'll be enough. That'll be all for regular. Okay, so quadratic formula. To solve ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, we've got to use the formula x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, well that means x equals opposite b, negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 3 squared is 9, 
minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 4, all over 2 times a, which is 1. So I've got negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9. Um, it, hopefully you typed this in your calculator. Everything inside this red box, I hope you typed in your calculator. And you get 9 plus 16, which is 25 all over 2. So my answer is negative 3 plus or minus 5 over 2. I'm not done though. I've got negative 3 plus 5 over 2, which is 2 over 2, which is 1. And I've got negative 3 minus 5 over 2, which is negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. So my two answers are 1 and negative 4. Now for this one, x equals opposite b positive 12 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Don't forget to put parentheses if you're going to do a negative, even though it's always going to be positive. b squared minus 4 times a times c, negative 4, all over 2 times a. So I've got 12 plus or minus, well negative, uh, so just type it in. Negative 12 squared even though I know it's 144, negative 12 squared, minus 4 times 3 times negative 4, and you get 192 over 6. Okay, uh, I don't think 192 is a perfect square, but let's see what it divides by. Uh, 192, I'm going to start dividing it by um, the larger perfect, well, divided by 4, yeah. But does it divide by 16? Yeah, 16 times 3. That's the bigger one. So I've got 12 plus or minus the square root of 16 times 3. Square root of 16 is 4. So 12 plus or minus 4 square root of 3 over the square root of 16 is 4. So that's what comes out. And 12 and 6 and 4 all divide by 2. So this is a 6, this is a 2, this is a 3. Final answer, 6 plus or minus 2 square root of 3 all over 3. Okay. Uh, last one, Mr. Duval has the perfect golf swing. The function that represents the ball in flight is given by this function, which represents the height of the ball in feet after it hits the ball with this high bird called, and t is the time in seconds. What is the maximum height? So graph and find the max. y equals negative 16x squared plus 84x. Window, um, I think this might work, and it does. So I go second, calculate, I want to find the maximum. So I go to the left, I go to the right, and I find my maximum. Now it says, what is the maximum height? X is time, T is X, which is time, and H, which is the function, um, F of X, is the height, so 110.25. 110.25 feet. Okay. Um, as far as for honors, if you're doing this, you need to find the, um, you want to justify it algebraically, so you need to find the x value of your vertex, which is h equals negative b over 2a. So negative 84 over 2 times negative 16. And then you're going to type in, you're going to fill in that number, whatever you get. So negative 84 divided by negative 32 and you get uh, 2.625 so you plug 2.625 into your function so I would go to um, second count value and just go 2.625 and it will tell you the corresponding y value and there you go okay so uh, maximum height is that. How long was the ball in the air? Well, the ball it was in the air, however long it took it to get to back to the ground, right? So I need to find this, which is a zero. A zero is oh, an x-intercept, it's in y equals zero. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to go second, calculate, and I'm going to go zero, number two. I need to go to the left of the zero, which is somewhere above it, so that's to the left. I go down and I'm to the right. I press enter and I get 5.25. So 5.25 
seconds. When was the ball 50 feet in the air? And there are two answers. So what I want to know is when was the ball 50 feet? That's your y value. So I'm going to go to y equals and, and figure out when does the y value equal 50. So I'm going to just go ahead and go to y equals graph 50 in the second equation. If I graph them, then I can see at two different times the function has a height of 50. I want to find out what those are, so I go second calculate intersect. Okay, just get closer to the one of the intersections versus the other, and you just press enter three times. It says first curve, I'm on one of the curves. Second curve, it bounced to the line. I press enter. I don't care to guess, so I press enter. And it tells me at 0.684 seconds. And second calculate intersect. So now I just make sure I'm over closer to that intersection. And press enter, 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 and it'll find that one. And 4.566 seconds. And there you go.